Hello, everybody. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, XGen and how to get it to uh, work appropriately with RenderMan, but also how to get the texture uh, to populate through the scan a little bit. So, uh, I'm going to do a series of podcasts on XGen coming up. So, let's just kind of get the ball rolling. Uh, there was a couple questions. Uh, some people were asking about how to get that texture through there. So, I just decided to go ahead and record this and put that out to the masses. So, uh, first things first, really simple scene. Uh, XGen is very, very picky. Uh, about uh, file pathing. So we're going to make sure I made just a quick project here. So next gen short hair. And I'm just going to go ahead and save this scene file. And we're just going to call it uh, ball model. Uh, real quick, I just put like the Pixar Disney shader on there. And uh, you can see all I did underneath the uh, basic material is I just kind of threw in a tiger texture for fun. So right underneath base color. And uh, that's pretty much all I've done so far. So the next step would be to simply just go to basically modeling and we can come up to basically generate and then go to XGen editor. Inside here we're just going to do a quick demo on how to get this. So collection, would um, this can mean several things. It could be hairstyles and you have different hairstyles underneath it. It could be a collection as it pertains to one individual character. So if this character was, you know, Tony for Tony the Tiger or something like that, this could be long hair, short hair, tail, under you know under belly hair whatever you want to call it so we're just going to call this you know for one for now uh, something along those lines and uh, we'll do groomable splines so it's a short hair and we're going to do randomly across the surface and say use the grooming tools so XGen if you've never used it before is basically an instancer that's driven by expressions um, what is it instancing? Well, right now we're having to instance hair, but it can also instance geometry across. And why do I say expressions? Because when we start painting things using these grooming tools, all it's really doing behind the scenes is, is making these maps and saving it out and pumping it into these channels that are over here, the length, width, um, you can see the, the tilt, the UV for grooming and the bends. So it's just giving you like a fancy uh, grooming option so you can interactively do it instead of having to paint just black and white pictures the whole time. It's kind of cool. So to start off with, we could see as soon as I applied XGen, I did it to the whole model. And uh, what it does, it kind of preps the surface. And I'm going to turn off this texture to see if we can see it. Bloop. Uh, you see these little dots here. They're kind of hard to see. There they are. They're more at the top. So when you see these little purple dots in the middle here, that just means uh, it's bind patches. That means that the surface has been prepped for it to receive something. Uh, this happens just by selection. So if I didn't want this to be on the whole character, if I wanted to just take it off the, the poles and the top, so I'll just go to faces real quick. I can select those top faces and literally go to my description and I could say bind patches, remove selected faces. Uh, it'll still show up there because this is a preview, but as soon as you click the eyeball up here in the top left, it'll update. So it basically reboots the hair. And we'll do the same thing for the bottom just for fun. Oops, let's keep it clean. Bloop. And so this is a way to remove patches, but you could also, uh, my suggestion would be to make some quick sets for yourself. And uh, so just come in here and do some real quick, say create a set, say quick set, and say like scalp, eyebrows, beard, whatever you're trying to work on at the time. Uh, so now we got, got that in there, uh, let's just kind of look at some different options. So we got length, width, pose, bend, orient, uh, elevation, when you first look at these, it can be a little intimidating, uh, as it was for me. Mm -hmm. So to start off with, since we're going to be doing, uh, this is a tiger texture, so we can kind of turn this back on here, so tiger texture. We want it to be pretty dense, because um, the shorter the hair, the more dense the fur needs to be, just because you got to give the appearance of thickness. Longer hair can overlap each other a little bit, and you can choose the density to be a little bit lower, because it's got volume, and it's actually laying over top of each other, so it's kind of nice. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is work on our density level. So what I suggest is to turn this up first to kind of get an idea of what you're looking for. So let's say, okay, 100. You can see now that the yellows are our guides. And the grays that we're seeing in here, these are the primitives. So those are the instant geometry is the gray ones that we're seeing. And these guides are what we're going to be manipulating to actually make the uh, fur look the way we want it to. So right now, inside of here, we got 100%. So let's just say preview, see what we get. So we can see, okay. Right away, it looks pretty thick, but this hair is kind of like bristles, like a old school broom bristles type now. So we're going to turn these down a little bit, 
And my suggestion is to work with uh, real world scale uh, when it comes to dynamics and things of this nature because it'll just end up looking better for you because it, it'll be relative and I just feel like it helps in general. Um, so we got these kind of tiny. You can still see I'm not where I wanted to be, so we'll take it up to about 150. And we'll preview again. Now it's getting a little denser. And again, they're just kind of coming straight out right now. So it will get a little nicer when we start combing things too. It's just right now, it's just, they're all just kind of protruding out based off where the UVs were at this point. So we're going to have to keep going until we're happy. And I'm really just trying to get an idea of what I like. So 200, now we're getting up there. The width maybe will come down just a little bit more in width. So let's take it down to a one. One's too too small for me, so let's take it to a two. A little better. For sake of this demo, we'll stop there. So now that we know the resolution we like, which is uh, 200 right here, my suggestion is now to kind of turn this back down to like a 60. All right, something a little bit more manageable, so 60 or even a 45 or something. And we'll just take it and burn it down. Uh, we'll go back to 60. And what we're looking for is we want this to be dense enough to where we can comb it, but we don't want it to be so dense here because it's all in the hardware that slows it down. So the trick is, after you adjust it here to this 60, what we can do is go over to the primitive tab where I told you all the expressions are going and making the generate the maps anyways. Every time we were changing this density level here, it was changing that density level here. So I'm going to take this density level and increase it back to 200. So in our preview, in our hardware view, we're going to actually get something that looks like six, uh, 60. Uh, then when it goes to render, uh, it'll, it'll jack it up to 200. So we click that, and you can see, boom, there we go. But we still have a really nice density level here. So it's all kind of coming from this guy. So and anytime we want to turn those off, again, you got the eyeball to kind of turn on the X-Gen, you got the eyeball to turn off the X-Gen. So let's just kind of start with just simple combing and how to get stuff where it needs to be. So what makes for, I, I suggest examining things one at a time, like what makes for not look real. Um, that's always my, my thing. So first off, if we previewed it, you can see how thick it is. They're all individually. There's no, they're all the same basically volume throughout. It's just one single cylinder coming out. So you'll notice a couple of things in here. There's a width and uh, things of that nature. There is a global width here, which we were adjusting to kind of get the general width option. And then there's also this uh, TPU, uh, texels per unit. Uh, so basically what that means is as we start painting, it's going to generate that uh, texture map and how detailed you want to be. So if you think of a texel as a, like a square and how much space it's actually taking up, it's kind of like an anti-aliasing thing, so it'll come out a little blocky. So the higher we take this, the, the bigger the grid will be and the smoother the uh, lines will be when it generates the texture map later. So uh, at least that's my take on it. So if anybody knows better, feel free to comment. All right, so here we go. So we're going to go jack this up to about 60. All right, and we're just going to preview it one more time and make sure everything's good. And now what we could do is we could start either combing this or taking away. So if you know where you want the fur to be, uh, we could do that first. So, or we could start combing. It doesn't really matter which one you want to do. So. Let's go to length. So this is probably the weirdest thing about the short hair is the taking away of it or how do I get rid of hair where I don't want it to be. Like you see an erase, probably your first instinct would be to come here and erase something. You're like, no, and the hair is going away. Maybe it's because I'm not previewing it. No hair is going away. Uh, so it's kind of weird like that. So it, length, it works on an additive process. So if we come here to basically spacing, that's going to basically be the spacing of like a stamp if you think about it coming from a Photoshop background. So it's like a stamp. So this is my brush size. If I hold down shift, I can make it bigger or smaller. All right, you can also use B if, since we're in Maya, but shift seems to be less buggy for me. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> All right, so I'm sorry. Um, so now we got this <laughs> shift and we're going up and down here. What we could do is then take the, the length right here and I could put the 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 goal link down to zero and the increments down to uh, basically you need, since we're starting our length at you can see right here the link starting at 0.5 so if we come down here we need this to at least be a negative so negative 0.5 like that and uh, as soon as we do that we can start going and uh, we can start painting this out like so and you can see it's starting to erase now the gray is not going to go away until we preview it so we say preview like this 
bloop, and now the gray is going away. So we can actually come in here and you can you can customize this however you want. You can just literally make whatever shape, or if you wanted to make a pattern of where you want the hair to be, boom, something along those lines. Oh, there it turns on, turn off. Yep. And there is there is mirroring functions too, so as long as you were working perfectly. So you can see here at the bottom we have the right flip and left flip. It is based off of the character's right. So when you say flip, it's not going to be based off screen space. So it's like so we we look at this right here and you want it to go that direction, you actually gotta click that guy over there and it gets kind of weird. And if we were actually working at the right location, you will see, oh there it is. So that went from left to right, kind of like that. So if we started painting again, so if I take this away over here, let's do it here, see if it works. There we go. Let's preview that. Then we're gonna say this guy, boop, you can see it now disappeared on the left hand side. So it's going to be, if you're working with a symmetrical model or, and you're trying to do eyebrows or something like that, that's kind of nice. So once we kind of get this going, so now we can start cleaning things up a little bit. So I'll take it all away. Let's take it all away and just start painting it all away. Kind of fun. And then boop. There you go. Take that away. That away, that away, that away. Maybe. Oh. And now what I could do is I can go back to length and I could turn this up. So now I could put this, I said 0.5 was the, the, that width basically, so our length. So I put it back to 0.5 and now I can actually tell it to be 0.5. So I know I'm adding. So I'm always adding, adding, taking away, or adding to add it back in. So I go to negative numbers if I want to take away, go to positive numbers. And the goal length is the direction in which you're going, increments how you're going to get there. So if you wanted to gradually get there, you can also just do a 0.5 and then every time I click, 0 0.5, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, until it gets there, it keeps adding that way. So if we come here and I just choose this guy and I slowly hit it like this, you can see it's not absolutely that 0.5 yet. Because I'm using a, a gauze uh, fall off, you can see that we do have the tapering. So it's like along the outsides of the brush, it's obviously not going to be a 0.1, it's going to be like a 0 0.05 or something along this line. So as I preview like that, and you can see how the hair shows up and it has a little bit of fall off. So if you obviously use a linear, it'll be a linear fall off and things of that nature, so you kind of get that idea. And we can mirror this again, just by, remember, it's based off their, their space, so as soon as I do that, boom, there we go. All right, so now if we wanted to start combing things, so let's add in just a little bit more for fun. So here we go, blue, 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 we're working on some crazy unibrow type thing going on here. So we'll do that, and then we'll just go ahead and flip it to be fun, like that. And what if we wanted to start, you know, combing this thing up? So there's a couple different options. Uh, if we wanted to make the line down the middle, you, if you just wanted to part, there's a part right here that kind of, you kind of hit it up and down. You can see how they're starting to part the Red Sea, basically. So it's like, hey, look at that. So it's going straight down. And then we can say preview, and you can see how things are starting to update. Now, it kind of gets confusing sometimes to see the gray and the yellow at the same time. There's a visibility option here for the yellow, which is the yellow guide curves. So if we turn this off and then you start painting again, it's not going to do anything because it needs to see those yellow curves for this to work. So if it's just there as a visual. So if we keep previewing now, you can see, hey, nothing really happened. But don't forget, you can always turn off the primitives at the top here and turn them back on. That's the cool part. So when we're doing this, now we kind of got an idea of which direction we're going to go. We can use pose now. And back in part, I'm sorry, most of the magnitude, how fast we're getting there, we still have the same fall off options and the spacing. Think of it like a rubber stamp type thing. So we go to pose, we're going to see similar structure of the whole throughout. So orientation, how much orientation had been per click, you know, think of it that way. And spacing. So if I take this and I just kind of start combing or start doing whatever direction I want, so it's swoosh, you know, we turn down my brush size a little bit. And you have to make the sound effects there, it doesn't work, I'm sorry. All right, so we do that right there, and we go preview. Yeah, so we got these couple of guys that just kind of went underground. So I'm going to go ahead and flip them too so we can see what's happening on the other side. Do do do. Got that. So this is going to happen because your sphere itself is not a collision mesh. It's just there as an object that we are actually just grooming on top of. So they added this elevation brush here, all right? So elevation and degrees. And what it does is it kind of pulls back. It dials it back based off these angles and degrees. So I can come in here. And just start painting and it pulls it back up so you can see like hey thanks it's like a forgiving brush all right and you do that and you can see boom now we're back in business five four three two one boom and we're going to flip that over there do the same thing nice so it's starting to look a little jagged we do have uh, a smooth option so we can start smoothing things out we'll scale my brush down using shift and, and just kind of hit the smooth 
start smoothing this up, make it a little nicer. And clicking, clicking, clicking. If you like first person shooters, you will love this because you're going to click a lot. So click it. Boom, there we go. And we might want to go back with the length and just kind of force it a little bit too. So take our increments down to a negative one, zero, and just kind of force it a little. And then we'll just say, okay. There we go. Click it with the smooth a couple times. Scale up my brush a little bit. Just hit that side a little bit. That was a little, that was a lot, but a lot of fun with it. There we go. So you can see <gasps> that this, that block pattern that we're starting to see here, it's gonna be related more to this TPU. Um, so we could scale this up a little bit. So do it cautiously though. It does uh, play with the performance. So we get, we sit here and we're, we're gonna play with this for a while and you wanna get in there really small and really have some fun with this. So so length and we'll just keep taking it away. We'll still cut, uh, customize your shape. This for me was the hardest part is to actually get the stop. To use XGen really wasn't that bad. It's to manipulate XGen was the key to make it look good. So that was the hardest part for me, even me, when I started to learn this. So so we say smooth, I'm gonna keep like smoothing, smoothing, being very picky about it. Boom. And you'll even then come in with the width brush. So if you wanted the width to be a little bit thicker here in the center and then the width to be tapered off at the end, um, you could do that too by coming in here and doing the same thing. It's based off the length. It's just now it's going to look at the individual width of the hair. Before I do that, I like to play with a couple different things. I like to go over to the primitive tab. It's one option that's not on there. There's this taper option. So I'm just going to like take the taper and turn it up so I can see it like what it's doing. It, it's like keeping it thick at the, uh, the root and then at the tip it's going to, it's feathered it out a little bit, which makes it look a little nicer, I think. So now we basically come back to our grooming. You can adjust the width. You can adjust the orientation. Maybe we want to add a little noise to make it not look so perfect. So we can come in and just kind of mess it a little bit, mess it up a little, like a straggle type thing. All right, and then we can just set the eyeball, and we can see what we're getting. Again, it, it might mess up your elevation just a little bit. We'll just slightly hit it just to make sure it's nothing weird. And then uh, preview it one more time, and we'll flip it. And, you know, non-perfection makes it look real, you know, so it's like you want some imperfections in here to make it not look so computer generated. So we got that in there, and you got your smooth, you got your twist, your part, the repel, you're, kind of, you're starting to get the idea here. Attract will be like a clumping brush, so you can kind of come in and get a couple of things to just a pinch, more or less, and it's based off brush size and the fall off on the brush itself spacing and the magnitude. So uh, eraser, let's, let's just show you what that does. So we, we hit basically the attract brush, and then we come back around it, and you're starting to erase. You're like, what is it doing? It's just going to kind of like play with the length and orientations. It kind of kind of gets everything to come back. So I really don't use it as much because I'll just keep going back over top of it with like the smooth, or I'll just undo. Um, the global reset is right here. This little bad boy right here. So we try to avoid that at all par, uh, all costs basically. So we kind of come in. We'll just do our pose and just kind of fix the hair the way we want it to be. Turn on the elevation a little bit. Cool. Repel. Turn up the a little bit. There we go. So, and then we'll flip it to the other side. There we go. And as soon as we get it there, it's a lot of just back and forth and playing for the look that you're trying to achieve. Now, once we get down here to the bottom, you can see there's a, a tip color and the base color, and it's got a length, and there's not much else here. So if we want to start customizing the color, uh, this is where it gets interesting. So the first tab is used a lot for the long hair of XGen and also for the objects if we were doing uh, geometry placement for the instancing. Um, it's really just generating the maps, but really the primitives are what's being gener generated in this whole thing. Like I said, it's, a, it's an instancer, so it's instancing these primitives or geometry. And this is basically how it's graphing to the mesh itself. Um, when we start playing with the look of the render and things of that nature, that's going to come underneath the preview and output section. Uh, in this demo, I'm going to go over how to get it to work for RenderMan. So, Underneath the operation of render, I'm going to switch this to render man. As soon as I do that, I'll also click this auto uh, auto set. 
it says primitive bound. Now what that does was when I click the auto set, it looks at the, the maximum length of the guide curves and it sets that, uh, that number inside there so you don't have any clipping. So it also just calibrates it to run a little smoother. So what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down to the bottom now and uh, we can see we have uh, you know, a shading group that's just chilling here in the world. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just add one. So underneath render man settings, uh, you know, there are a couple different ones that you can play with. There's actually one for hair, but to keep it simple, we'll do the Disney shader since we're just having to talk. It turns it all blue so we know it works, so that's kind of nice. If you click the red button, that actually opens it up. So what we're going to do is we're going to graph uh, a color, which is going to be obviously the tiger texture into our hair. So to do that, this is the fun part. So we're going to come up to the top here and we're going to click on color. And we're just going to name this. It works based off object names. So we're just going to say like Tony's base color, you know, something along those lines. So we're just going to say something along those lines, say plus sign. All right. Now, before I make this a texture map, uh, Maya is not very good about understanding what uh, any of the render man shaders are. So just for fun, just because we're going to be those people, uh, I'm going to come over here real quick. I'm going to label this and call it Tony's, you know, shader, whatever. So I can come back to it. And I'm going to swap this to basically a um, Maya material real quick. So I'm just going to send it to like a Lambert or something like that, a blank Lambert. And the reason I'm doing that is because as soon as I click on my extra over here, all right, as soon as I click this and make it a uh, basically a map, it samples the mesh. All right, so as soon as I come over here and say create map, all right, it's going to say you want to make a map. Okay, cool. You can name whatever you want. Say max map resolution. This is going to you know the resolution of the map itself. So we can Texas per unit. We got it at five, so we can jack this way up so it's a little bit smoother. For this, we'll leave it at five. It's no big deal. Um, so we'll say create like that, and it sampled the mesh and turned it white. Now, if that was uh, the render man, it would give you a big error. It'll say, I hate you, uh, you know, start cursing at you and things of that nature. So we want to keep it nice and clean. So what we use this for is, uh, Xgen is notorious for using uh, ptex files. Uh, ptex files are basically, uh, my take on it is it's a texture with uh, lesser distortion. So it's like everything's like in a perfect spot. Um, again, this is only through my background, so I could be completely wrong on that. So, but it works. So what happened was it makes this little texture, and we're gonna come over here to the shader ball and open up our hyper shade. Da -da -da, da -da -da. There we go. And what happened was is every time we made that, it made this little file texture chilling right here. So we're gonna come into our file texture, and we're gonna be those people. So we're gonna go in and real quick, and I'm just gonna load the tiger texture. All right into the file that was generated. So you can see it looks a little different, but it still looks the same. And what I'm doing is I'm, I'm tricking Maya a little bit because it made a, a file texture that's going to generate a ptext file. So I, I graphed it, instead of hand painting it in there, I graphed a file into there, uh, which was a JPEG. And as soon as I click save, it converts it to a ptext file for me, which is nice because we kind of tricked the system there. So it's like, hey, save. And now it's considered a ptext file. Now the whole reason I did that now now that I've done that and I got it on there and all the things, I can actually switch my material back now. Go back to an existing material and go to his material like that. That was just the setup for this, all right? So what we have to do now is we have to get our shader, which is this blue guy right here, which is the Disney uh, 2 uh, shading group that we see here. So I'm going to click this guy. All right, we have to come inside here to his color. So it's going to be, it didn't go there. So that was nice. Thank you. XGen for not going to the right place. Bloop. There you go. Now we went to the right place. So in the base color, we're going to trick it a little bit. So we're going to go underneath the render man. We're going to go underneath the... Uh, let's see here. Uh, we're going to go under render man. Make sure I'm in the right place here. Patterns. And we're going to use what's called uh, PXR PrimVar. And what this does is it looks for object names inside your uh, inside your scene file right now. So right now our object names, we're definitely going to be using it as a color. And believe it or not, I actually forgot what it was, so we're going to go find it again. So um, this right here is what we called it. Oh, Tony Base Color. I should have remembered that. So Tony Base Color. So we can come back over here and just go Tony Base 
color. And it is uh, case sensitive, so make sure that you are typing it exactly the same. So as soon as I do that right there, that little magic there, is when it actually shows up in the render. So technically speaking, I should be able to, let's just go ahead and do a quick render and see what it looks like. So render it in uh, render man. There we go. So now we can see the texture is actually populating through the actual individual strands of hair. So you can see it's propagating. It actually makes it look like a tiger. So now we can start playing around with stuff. So just for fun, just to kind of come back over here to the X Gen, just to show you guys this stuff is, you know, you don't have to think of it as uh, fine china or anything. Let's we'll click reset. I want you guys to see this. So I'm going to make all the hair come back. And let's just uh, do a quick little pose or something. Scale this brush up a little bit, kind of send it to the side. Comb, 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 comb. And boop, preview. Like that. And then we're going to go to the flip to left option, preview. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. So we can see that we kind of got it combed a little bit. So let's, I'm going to do a little bit more drastic than that. Let's go. Uh, 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 uh. I want to see something there. Here we preview. All right, fix those elevation points. All right, so now that we got those fixed, uh, do a quick render, see what we got. I just want to see more of the hair, more of the fur, sorry. So now that we got more of the fur showing up, we can. We can start to see like how it's hang how it's actually looking. Now, uh, Render Man. Obviously, I'm using the uh, physical based render in Render Man. You can see all the shadows inside of here. Uh, but it's also progressive scanning, so it's like it's going through and it's slowly taking out the noise and tightening it up to pixels. It's just the way that Render Man renders. If anybody's curious watching this. Um, but now we can start just looking at the color. You're like, oh, that looks really nice. But then you got to go back to your posing and your length, and it looks too perfect. It's like you're just cutting like a flowy. So this is where it's going to come down to pre-production. So you're going to have to look at your uh, subject matter, your uh, concept drawings, or whatever you're trying to do. So if it's a real tiger, obviously look at a real tiger and how his, the fur is and how even it is. It's smooth on his back, and it's clumpy on the bottom because it weighs on his belly a lot. So this would be several different fur descriptions. Uh, on one individual character. So you could have one for the face, one for the back, one for the tail, one for each of the legs, one for the underbelly. And you could even layer them on top of each other. So you could have one that's just like peach fuzz on top of one, end of one of them to make it a little bit lighter. And you can overlap them. Uh, layering is definitely the key to making convincing looking fur and hair. So um, kind of do this on there for fun. And we can keep playing with it. And the trick it now is to just learn how to art direct your fur. So it's like going in and saying, okay, how much taper do I really want? All right, turn that up. All right, how much density do I really want? Maybe you put this instead of the 200, I'm going to put it to, you know, 300. Something like that. Uh, you know, more combing, more baldness, where, where do I want to take away? So it's like, do I want it to be, you know, more just right there. More custom patterns. Cool, so let's render it now. Cool. And just keep in mind they are primitives. You'll need to manipulate your uh, shaders and stuff to make them look a little softer and how they receive light uh, in the overall scheme of things. So, But again, this demo was more about just having to play with short hair just a little bit, how to get the color on there, and I think we definitely achieved that. So we had a little fun with this, and I really don't have anything spectacular in the scene right now. I think I'm even using default lighting. There's nothing in here except for obviously my collection in my fur, because this is what a collection looks like, it's just a big souped up group, and a sphere. Uh, so I didn't do any crazy settings to get it to look that good either yet, so it actually came out pretty decent. So again, it's just taking your time and trying to think about the effect that you're trying to achieve, and going real slow and having some fun with it. I mean, the whole point of us doing all this is to have fun and uh, make some uh, kick-ass looking characters, I think. So it's always just a step to kind of enhance what's there uh, for me, that's what fur is. It's an enhancement of the geometry that's underneath it to make it look awesome. So keep in mind, always look at your reference. Add a lot of noise to the length. Um, some other things we could do. 
uh, for if you wanted to go kick it up a notch, if, if you're like, hey, I want to take this to the next level, what else can I do? These things are just maps. Uh, what you can do is add some expressions and add some noise in there for the length and stuff to it, where it automatically adjusts the length, uh, just added random values in there to kind of uh, change the height and the, the width and the taper and stuff like that. You could do that here without having to hand paint it. Um, this basically using these expression nodes and stuff, they're just expressions. So you can manipulate it with any math function inside of here. But we're going to go over that in a later podcast anyway, so I think this is a good place to stop. If you have any questions,